open your Bibles up to Mark chapter 5. We're going to take a little trip. Mark chapter 5, and let's all stand when you get there, if you can. If you can't, that's fine. And they get to Mark chapter 5, and I want you to look at verse 21 to start with. And uh, it says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and what is it? she shall live. Look at verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now look at verse 35. And while he yet spake, there came from the, uh, the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Look here. As soon as uh, Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house that the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tum tumult, tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And uh, look here. And, and, and when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye, don't you look at this, this ado and weep. The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh, uh, look here, the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, and enter in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Now I can't pronounce them right. If you can, praise the Lord. It says, Talita uh, Kuma, uh, I can't get that, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, rise. And straightway the damsel rose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years old. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. He raised her up and now give her something to eat. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Richard you be Brother King. Lift him up uh, and heal him of his affliction. And we pray now, Lord, that uh, uh, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the, uh, giving me the word this morning. Pray that you'd be with me again this evening. Fill me full of your Holy Ghost, Lord. Put the words in my mouth you to have say. Pray that this be glory and honor unto you. Not me, but you. It's your word. It's your message. It's not mine, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I'm just going to call this Jesus' power demonstrated. Amen. Amen. We've learned... Uh, through science to harness many natural forces. Science has been able to do that. All right? Making things possible that uh, the past generations thought to be impossible, like electric light bulb and everything else. Uh, television. I didn't see a television until we moved to Ohio. But sadly, all of this stuff has given us the impression that we will eventually be able to bend all of the powers of the universe and nature to our will. Uh, uh, we, we've left God out. This is not true, true because only the Creator Himself can overrule the powers that has been set in motion. He can't overrule His own powers. But the scientists believe they can. They try to disprove the Bible. They try to explain everything away. When the Creator visited the earth 
Uh, you see, he proved his superiority. He proved his power. He proved his power over the deep, over the demons, over disease, over death, as we will see today. He's proved his power over and over and over again. Now your scientific community tries to explain it all away. But God is still in control no matter what them idiots do. I'm going to get right into it because I've got a little ways to go. First of all, we see a concern amid crisis. Look at verse 21 here now. We see uh, as we said, chapter 5, verse 21, And when Jesus passed over again in the ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed. Don't you take a gander at this. You see, and then verse 24 tells us that Jesus went with him. Now, following the time, uh, Jesus had been preaching hard. I want you to uh, think about this here. Jesus had been preaching hard. He had took the 12 disciples with him and went across the Sea of Galilee to the eastern shore where he preached. Now, on his way, he calmed the sea. Um, uh, chapter 4, verse 35 and 41, uh, he calmed the sea, if you remember reading about that. He said, uh, peace be still, and it stopped. He could do that. And, uh, and when he landed, uh, look here, he showed his power over Satan by healing the demon-possessed man called the, demon, the, the demonic of uh, Gadara, and he healed him. Uh, when he was on the other side of preaching, Jesus had been traveling. He had been preaching hard. Now the people of the region, most of them were Gentiles, and they were afraid of him, and they did not want him here. They asked him to leave. Now then, Jesus returned back to the west side of the lake. I told you he was going to take a trip, where he was greeted by a large crowd of people. Now, he was greeted by a large crowd of people. Now, I'm, I'm going to uh, go to Luke uh, chapter 8, verse 40. You don't have to go there if you... Uh, I'll, I'll just go there real quick here. And, and, and I just want you to... What, I guess that's what they call setting a table. And uh, it says over in Luke 8, 40... Uh, and when it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people were gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. This tells us that they was waiting for him. There was a big crowd of people there. And uh, as we look at this here, we see uh, if Jesus had landed in Capernaum, and we were pretty well satisfied he did, then we can understand the crowd because he had already had a reputation there of doing good works, of doing miracles there. Uh, he had a reputation of doing that. Already there. And if you, verse 21 here tells us, when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. That's how I got that. Jesus was near the sea. This tells us that he was probably stayed here. And according to what I've read and what I've studied, it was probably at the house of Levi where he was staying. Next we see Jesus facing the crisis. Look at verse 22. We see, And there becometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by the name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now, don't you look at this. Now, this is a fellow that is in his stress. Well, Jesus was involved with the crowd. Now, you have to remember, these people was all around him at the seashore. Uh, then this fellow comes up, uh, the, the ruler of a synagogue, and tells him, my daughter is sick. She is sick unto death, you see. This fellow was a leader. This was an important fellow, and he had charge of the buildings and the services of the temple. You see, he had probably seen Jesus' power before because he come and he fell down at his feet. 
You have to see little things like that in the Word of God. He humbled himself, and now he came with a need of his own, approaching Jesus, and fell at his feet. Now, this is an act of humility. This is something that God had opened his heart. Look at verse 23. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she might be healed, and she shall live. He believed. He was earnest. It was very clear that his plea for help was desperate. But the question I had as I looked over this today, why do people wait so long to come to Jesus? Why do they wait till the point of death before they come to Jesus? Most people wait too long. They wait till something goes wrong. They wait till sickness comes. They wait till they have an accident or something. And then they want to come to Jesus. Why do they wait so long to come to the Lord Jesus Christ? This fellow come and said, my little daughter is sick. She's dying. He was crying. She's at the point of death. We learned uh, she was 12 years old, and he says, my little daughter, this year, this reveals his love for her. This reveals his love for his family. And he was in pain. When you've got a child that's sick, uh, you're sick too. Amen. Amen. It affects everybody. It affects everybody around that child. You see, look at verse 42 of Luke chapter 8. You see, uh, this, this man was in pain. He was in sorrow. And it was his little daughter. And to lose her would break his heart. I want you to look at this. Look at verse 42 of chapter 8, if I can find it here. And it says, For he had only one daughter. That was his only daughter, about 12 years old. She was 12 years old, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. He couldn't move. He had people all around him. Uh, this man considered this an emergency. All right? Many of us has been there. Many of us have been in that situation. Many of us has, has family members sick, children is sick. We have been there. We should know how this fellow felt. When this come upon him, you see, she is at the point of death. Jairus knew nothing more could be done except for the Lord Jesus Christ, and she could die at any minute. That'll make you seek God. That'll fellow say one time that he took at least two airplane trips a, a year so he could catch up on his praying. Folks, I'm telling you, people wait too long to seek Jesus out. You see, this man come, and she was at the point of death. But Jairus actually believed that she could be healed. He believed this, and he believed that she could live if only Jesus could get there in time. Jesus honored the faith of Jairus. Well, he went with him. How I know, look at verse 24, tells me he did. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. Jesus went with him. So we look here. Jesus honored Jairus by going with him, but he could not go fast enough. He couldn't go fast enough. Because something happened on the way to Jairus' house. Look at verse 25. Now you see, I told you we are going to take a trip. He just didn't go to Jairus' house. Things happened. There was a crowd falling. People was all gathered around him. I mean, they, he couldn't hardly move for the people. And it says, And a certain woman which would had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things and many physicians, and had spent all, look here, that she had, and uh, was nothing Bettered. She was no better, but rather grew worse. Don't you look at this now? And uh, and look at and when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. Yes. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I will be whole. Now this was on the way to Jairus' house. Alright? They couldn't get the Chevrolet started, so they're trying to make their way to the Ford. All right, I want you to look at this. 
And she says, and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. And uh, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now look here. He was healed immediately. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned himself about in the press and said, Who touched me? Why don't you take a gander at this? She was healed, but Jesus stopped and sought her out. Why? To encourage her. But what I want you to see here, all of this took up a lot of valuable time. Remember, Jairus' daughter is dying. He wants Jesus to come and heal his daughter. And on the way, he runs into this woman with the issue of blood. And she gets healed. Look here. Uh, I mean, this is really something else. You see, look at verse 31. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me. The disciples, this is a disciple. And he looked round about to see, look here, her that had done this thing. But this woman, fearing that determining knowing uh, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all. Oh, the truth. Now this is on the way to Jairus' house. Now Jairus is probably all beside himself. Because his valuable time is gone. Now just look at it. Now uh, next we're going to see a confidence amid calamity. Look at verse 35. Don't you look at this. Just back up to... Uh, Verse 34, all right, and it says, and he said unto her, talking about the woman with the, with the issue, I might as well get this in too, thy faith has made thee whole, go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now look at verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, but you look at this, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master father? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, <laughs> look at that, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. I want you to take a gander at that. Uh, you see, uh, the message was completely hopeless. The man was hopeless. His daughter was dead. D-E-A-D. -E Junkyard dog dead. I mean, she was gone. Uh, while the delay had brought joy uh, to the woman with the issue of blood, it proved disastrous to Jairus' mission. Yes. But there were there folks of Jairus' house that did not believe. They were lost bigger than Pap's pig. I mean... Uh, they needed help bad. You see, as the messenger saw it, time had run out. When Jairus uh, 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 started, there was hope when he started out. Jesus could heal the and, and uh, sickness, illness, but death was something else. Death was final. No one considered the possibility that Jesus could raise a person from the dead. They never even thought about that. On their way, the daughter was pronounced dead. They said, you're wasting your time. My God can do anything. Amen. It was time to thank him for his willingness to help and just let him go on about his way. Let Jairus go on home and mourn his loss. But Jesus, he said, be not afraid, only believe. Jesus didn't have to say a whole lot, did he? Huh? He's God. God manifested in the flesh. We see an answer of assurance in verse 36, where he said, Be not afraid. Jesus turned to the brokenhearted Jairus. Be not afraid, only believe. Christ was, and I want you to put yourself in this fellow's place now. 
He was to stop fearing, keep trusting Jesus. His daughter was dead. Now Jesus was about to ask Jairus to hope for the best. And his daughter was dead. Now what would you do? Put yourself in this place. What would you do if someone come and told you your 12-year-old daughter was dead, D-E-A-D, junkyard dog dead, and somebody told you to keep on believing, trust in me, everything's going to be fine. That man had to have a lot of faith. He had to have a lot of belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I'm telling you, you need to take your shoes off when you walk around in the Word of God. This fella had to have faith. He had to have belief. He had to be screwed on to the right boat. Jesus was telling him to continue to trust me. And he, now look, and, and he had, when he first came, trusted Jesus, but now things have changed. How many of us, look here, how many of us today trust him that much. Trust Jesus as much as Jairus did. How many trust Jesus as much today as you did when you first accepted him as your Savior? Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Do you still trust Jesus as much now as you did when you first got saved? Jairus did. Don't you look at this. Everything was going haywire. Through all of the reports, Jairus had been given a reason to trust Jesus' power. You see, he had also been given encouragement by Jesus' willingness to heal. Jesus was willing to go heal his daughter. He went with him. The Bible tells me he did right there in verse 24, and Jesus went with him. But he got sidetracked by the woman with the issue of blood. Folks, Take your shoes off. When Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood, verse 25, he had given Jairus even more reason to believe. Don't you think about that now. When he healed the woman with the issue of blood, the way I see this, Jairus probably knew that woman. Jairus probably knew about her sickness. He probably even knew how long she had been sick. He was a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus was. He probably knew this woman, had known her for a long time. And Jesus was saying, rise, he was telling Jairus, rise above your circumstances. That's what we tell everybody, rise above your circumstances. Focus your trust on me, on Jesus. And here was the true test of Jairus. Rise above your circumstance and keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, this was a true test for old Jairus. My favorite verse, Colossians 3, 2, set your, th your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all this other stuff is going to be added unto you. Listen, knowing the importance of what he was about to do he got rid of the crowd. Jesus got rid of the crowd. He got rid of them. In fact, he left them all behind except for three disciples. Only three. Now, he usually took all 12 with him, but he only took three. Now, I don't want to go into overtime. I'm going to show you something. See, Jesus lived by his own word. That's what I keep telling you. Look at uh, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 19. See, God can't break his word. God can't go back on his word. That's what I keep telling you. When you pray, use the word of God. God can't go back on his promises. God can't go back on what he tells you. Uh, he can't do it. He is God. He is all holy. Look at verse 15 of chapter 19 of Deuteronomy. I want you to look at this. Now we're talking about the, the law. Now, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity. Or for, look, look here, for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses, 
or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. <coughs> so he took three witnesses with him. Don't you look at this. The raising of a dead person this early in his ministry was an event that could not be properly appreciated because it would bring everything maybe too quick and not to the hour that God wanted it to happen in. You see what I mean? His hour had not yet come. He only had the three witnesses. He didn't want it spread abroad because God's plan was that. Number three, calmness amid commotion. Look at verse uh, 38. And he cometh through the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult. And uh, look here. And them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had, look here, put them out, he talketh, look here, he taketh the father and the mother and the damsel. Now, who was the father? Jerias. That were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was. Fine. Don't you look at this stuff here. Look at this. We got a real bad scene here. This was an uproar. I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on there. Jesus had left one crowd behind, but then found another inside Jairus' house. You see, this included family, friends, professional mourners, that he'd been hired for the uh, for the occasion. I mean, they'd probably hired the uh, uh, Capernaum Rock Band or something. I mean, they had a commotion going on. They had the flute players. They had the whole shooting match. The uproar would have been impossible to describe. I mean, they had something going on there, you see. And then we see the Lord's rebuke in verse 39. Uh, uh, let me get over here, verse 39. It says, And he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make you a do and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Jesus considered this crowd completely out of place. Now, uh, God is a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. He's not a God of uh, confusion or anything. He is a God of order. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Now there are those that say that the girl was not really dead, but in a coma. We're going to look at a few verses and finish this thing up. I want you to go to Luke chapter 8 again. We're going to look at a couple of verses here and I'm going to show you one. It's, it's free. It's not going to cost you nothing. Luke chapter 8. I want you to look at verse 53. This is Luke's account. Verse 53. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. These mourners knew that she was dead. They were professional mourners. They knew dead when they saw dead. Now, and, and, and look here, Jesus, now look here, and he put them out and took her by the hand, called saying, made arise. Don't you look at verse 55. And her spirit came again. She was dead. And she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Don't you look at this. The spirit come again. Only God can bring the spirit back. I'm telling you, uh, look at Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 12. Now, I want you to write this one down here. In, in the back of your Bible or what they have. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. I'm trying to take it easy here tonight. Uh, verse 7, I'm behaving myself pretty good. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Now I want you to look at this. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. I want you to look at these next words. And the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. God formed man out of the dust of earth, breathed in his nostrils a breath of life, and he became a living 
soul. He breathed the spirit of God into them. You see, and you see that. Uh, see, they said it's not true. Uh, she's not really dead. She was in a coma. She was junk guard dead. The spirit had left her body. When the spirit leaves your body, you are D E A D. You are dead. Jesus used the term of sleep to, it, to tell us that her condition was only temporary. Death could not hold her. Uh, she would rise again from her sleep, just as we will someday. Uh, you see, uh, when we pass away as a born-again believer, we just go to that old grave. You see there's a complete separation. Uh, you see, the Spirit returns unto God, and the soul goes to where it's prepared to go to. We just waiting for Him to come again. And when he hollers, we're going to get up out of that ground. Death couldn't hold this young lady. Death couldn't hold her. Death can't hold you if you were saved, if you are born again. Death has no hold on you. None at all. The mourners did not understand Jesus' word. Why? Because they were unbelievers. That's why. See, the girl was really dead. These were professional mourners, like I said a while ago. They had saw people die. They knew what dead looked like. They knew dead. So they laughed at him. How would you look? Their change from willing to laughter shows just how sincere their grief really was. They went from weeping to laughing at him when he was going to raise her up. So Jesus restored order. He threw them all out. <laughs> he threw them out. You see, Jesus commanded in the middle of all of this confusion, he threw the mourners out. And he commanded, he took the little girl by the hand and he raised her up. He did not use hocus pocus. He did not use black magic. He took her by the hand and raised her up. Just like he's going to do to us one of these days. He's going to raise us up. Folks, let me tell you something. I've got some verses you can write down. I don't have time to go to them. You can go to Acts chapter 8. Uh, verses 9 through 24, Acts chapter 13, verse 8 through 11, Acts chapter 19, uh, 13 through 20, and there's many more verses in the Bible that you can go to. The black arts had no place in Jesus' ministry. It is forbidden for us to take a part in. I'm talking about fortune telling. I'm talking about palm readers. I'm talking about these uh, people that can tell you a fortune and everything else. They're of the devil. Stay away from them. I have known people that tried to contact these people. I know people that just went to look for them. I knew a fellow went down to New Orleans and spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to find this voodoo stuff. Well, he found it, and it wasn't but just a little while after that. He was junkyard dead at a ripe old age of 35 years old. Now, that voodoo stuff is real. but it's of the devil. And Jesus said, stay away from it. Jesus didn't need that stuff. And he didn't want nobody to tell nothing. He didn't want nobody to tell anything about him raising this little girl to, uh, from the dead. Why? His hour hadn't come yet. And the miracle of the little girl being raised from the dead would have been witness enough for anything. She would have been a walking testimony. You see, Jairus could have given up and quit and went on home when he was told his daughter was dead. Jesus said, hey, trust in me. You see, we had concern amid Christ. Confidence amid crisis, calamities amid uh, 
commotion and a command against confusion. He throwed them out. You remember he cleansed the temple and throwed them out. God is a God of order, not Amen. disorder. Amen. Let's all stand. Lord, we thank you for this day for blessing. Lord, we thank you for another message that you have given me. We just give you all the praise and the glory. We believe every word of it. We believe it where you said you raised a little girl up from the dead. The Bible proves that you did that. The Bible proves uh, that you brought the spirit back into her again, Lord. We pray that you'll bless now and be with us and help us to have the same confidence, the same faith, the same belief that old Jairus had. But you'll bless now this invitation. It's yours, it's not mine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.